The domain of this function is not something I want you to try to do in your head. It's too easy to make mistakes. I see it time and time again. When you have a square root function, what you want to do when you're trying to find the domain is take the radicand, what is under the radical, and set it greater or equal to zero. And then we're going to solve for x. That is going to give us our domain. So in this case, I'm going to have 3 minus 6x is greater than or equal to 0. Now I can use my inverse operations to go ahead and solve this inequality. Now in this case, there's a couple different ways you can go ahead and do this. If you're going to, remember, multiply or divide by a negative, you got to go and flip the sign. A lot of times in this case, I just like to go ahead and get the x to the other side since it's equal to a 0. So therefore, it's going to be 3 greater than or equal to a 6x and then divide by six on both sides and I get a one half is gonna be greater than or equal to x. Now sometimes students get a look like still get confused here. So therefore you can just rewrite everything around and you say, okay, the domain of this function is for we're going to be all values that are less than or equal to one half. The best thing I like to do before I like to go ahead and write out the domain or just to, like, let's just do a mental check. Let's make sure that this works because a lot of times students will do something in their head or if they're taking a test, they see the multiple choice answers and they look at the answer that they feel they think that works out correctly for what they did and they end up making a mistake. What's a common number that's less than or equal to one half, I think the easiest number would be zero, right? Zero is usually always a great choice. So let's go and plug in zero. When I plug in zero, six times zero is zero. Three minus zero is three. Can you take the square root of three? Of course you can. Let's go and pick a number that is larger than one half, just to make sure it's not in the domain. Let's pick one. Six times one is six. Three minus six is a negative three. And we know we cannot take the even square root here of a negative number. Our domain here, we can go ahead and take a number line. I always least to like to write a number line when I'm trying to use interval notation. I'm going to put a nice little open circle. Now again, this is less than or equal to, meaning that one half is included, right? Because if you were to plug in one half, you would get zero in your radicand. You can take the square root of zero. And then we're going to take all values to the left of one half. So therefore, on interval notation here, keep on going to the left is going to be represented by negative infinity. To the right would be infinity. But again, we have a hard stop here at one half, right? We can't go any number past one half. So therefore, my interval notation for this problem is going to be from negative infinity to one half. Hopefully this problem was helpful for you. We have a better understanding of how to find the domain of radical functions. If so, you're going to find some value in my next video.